Hey guys, so my name is Josh Pelkey. I am the sixth grade boys uh, leader, um, and I have the pleasure of being able to present this message to you guys tonight. Um, I'm really just going to walk through what we talked about on Thursday. Um, I, I also uh, presented there live for the group, um, and, and really two things I hope. If you weren't there, I hope that um, you feel a little bit more included, um, which is which is my kind of my hope. Um, if you couldn't make it, um, don't want you to feel like you missed out. Um, with that. If uh, you know you were there and there was something that stood out to you that was said or, or pointed at, um, I want you to be able to kind of know where that was and be able to find that, maybe um, re hear it reiterated or maybe even said just a little bit of a different way so it makes either more sense or um, just provides some more insight into what we talked about on Thursday. But with that, we're really just talking about uh, th this idea. We're, we're starting a new series on um, the bigger picture. Okay, that's kind of our, our theme for the next couple weeks. And, and really a question I want to pose right out of the gate is, have you heard that phrase, bigger picture? I'm sure you have. We all have, right? Usually people use that phrase, bigger picture, when there's more to the story that we can't actually see. Um, sometimes in our lives, it, it can be harder, though, to see what that bigger picture may be for us. So take, for example, one thing. That, that I think a lot of times the bigger picture gets lost in, and, and typically that's social media, right? Maybe you follow a celebrity, an influencer, YouTuber, maybe just someone really popular at school, right? From the pictures that pop up in their feed, though, you would think that their life is absolutely perfect, right? Perfect hair. Uh, they've got a ton, of, a ton of friends. Maybe their family makes a bunch of money, so they have the best Christmas or birthday presents. Um, you know, and so for them, things seem that they couldn't be better, right? Things seem like they've got it all figured out. But as we focus on this idea of bigger picture, maybe thinking about that bigger picture in their life, taking kind of that behind the scenes look, we would realize just how far from perfect their life actually is. And so when it comes to so many things in our own life, we, we kind of do that, don't we? We, we tend to focus on only one small part of what's happening, kind of that snapshot in life that shows the best thing about what's going on. But when we take that deeper behind the scenes look, it may not be the case. We tend to look at just one circumstance, one event, one detail, and just kind of think about how it is impacting us in that moment and right now. But when we do that, we miss out on everything else that's happening on around us. You see, there's so much more that we may not see and we're missing that bigger picture, right? Missing that bigger picture. Now, I think that this happens a lot in areas of our lives, but the, really the one area that we're going to talk about tonight is our families. Um, I know all of our families may be different and, in fact, probably are very different from each other um, unless you're sitting here watching it with your sibling, you know, I think that no matter what, we can all agree on this, this point is that when it comes to our families, we tend to think we are the main character in the story. Let me reiterate that. When it comes to our families, we tend to think that we, you and I, are the main story and in in main character in the story. You see, whether we realize it or not, I think a lot of us expect that, at least certainly in our own families, the world should revolve around us, right? While we may not do it intentionally, our actions typically tend to say, hey, I'm the one that should get the, all the attention. I should be the center of the universe or your universe, right? Just think about it. We would rather have everyone else on our schedule of staying up late and then sleeping in, right? We would love it if our family meals could just have maybe some more of the things that we like to eat. For example, if I, if I had less vegetables, but maybe more Cheetos on my plate, <laughs> I'd be pretty pumped, right? We don't think twice when asking f our parents for money for things like Fortnite or a new pair of uh, Nikes or maybe some concert tickets, things of that nature, because those are things that we want, right? Those are things that we like. And so basically, without realizing it, our actions say to our families that we want them to focus first on how we feel, what we need and what they need to do to make life look the way that we want it to look. Now, again, families are different. So maybe 
things in your family are a little different. Maybe all the attention actually is focused on you. Your parents are all up in your business, right? They wanna know every detail of your feelings. They wanna know how your grades, and so they, they think that those are most important. They wanna know what your activities you know, are. What, how are sports going? How's uh, you know, your friends going? They wanna know just what you're thinking and, and feeling constantly. Every, every single day they ask. And, and honestly, it seems like it's too much. And, and, and your family's driving you crazy with all the questions, the conversation, you know, the attention. And quite honestly, I, I get it. That's, that's the type of family I grew up in. And it, it, it sounds like a lot because it, it can be a lot. But I want to just point out one thing. In this case, you, as well as I was growing up, are looking at what's happening in your family in a way, again, that's all about you. You're noticing how all that attention is impacting you. You're not necessarily thinking about your parents' intentions. You see, whether we're the center of attention or we want all of the attention in our families, we're not seeing the bigger picture. We're not seeing that there may be a lot more happening in our homes. A lot more of things that we don't know about or understand yet that's causing our parents or siblings to treat us the way we do. Or maybe we're not seeing the bigger picture of our own actions. That the way we view ourselves, treat our families has an impact on them too. But here's the deal guys, missing that bigger picture. And, and again, this is really from experience, but having and, and missing that bigger picture can cause a lot of frustration, can cause a lot of hurt within our own families. You see, these types of tricky family dynamics have been around for as long as, as there's been families. It's not a new thing. In fact, some of the craziest stories in the Bible are about this very topic. And again, trust me, these family stories are probably a lot crazier than any of us can even imagine. So today, to really drive home this topic, I want to really focus on a guy in the Bible who found himself really in the middle of a pretty, fa a pretty famous and crazy family situation. His name, as you probably know him, is Joseph. He was actually a really big deal in the Old Testament, actually a collection of books in the Bible. Um, uh, this is the Old Testament, but he, he himself has um, a, quite a big portion um, of, of a book in the Bible that he um, is in. And so really want to focus on him tonight. So a little bit of his backstory, Joseph was one of the youngest um, sons of a man named Jacob. Joseph had a lot of older brothers. Um, and by a lot, I mean he had 10. 10 older brothers. So we're talking a, a pretty decent sized family. Um, now Joseph's family probably looked quite a bit different than the family we, we imagine, right? Um, one thing's true, however, about all families, um, both back then and now, is that the relationships in them um, can be quite tricky, right? So with that being said, I really want to take a look into what made some of the relationships in Joseph's family so tricky. So if you look in your Bible, Genesis 37, 3 through 4, it says this, Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children. Uh-oh, <laughs> that's already an issue, right? Let's continue reading. Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age. So one day, Jacob had a special gift made for Joseph, a beautiful robe. But his brothers hated Joseph because their love, uh, or their father loved him more than the rest of them. They couldn't say a kind word to him. So what do we have, right? So basically, Jacob loves Joseph more than any of his other children. And he didn't do anything to hide it, right? Jacob could have just said, hey, other sons, I, I just want to let you know that Joseph you know, over here who gets to hang out with me instead of working all day, he's, he's my favorite, right? Now, honestly, I don't know <laughs> about you, but honestly, if, if I were one of Joseph's brothers, I would be super jealous. I'd, uh, it, it's kind of like Joseph, what, 
always had the nicest, most expensive headphones that money can buy, right? And then as brothers, they just get, they don't get anything. So you can see how this tension builds, right, in their family. Well, ultimately, what happens next in the story really just makes things worse. Let's take a look. Verse 5 through 7 of, of the same chapter. One night, Joseph had a dream. And when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were all in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly, my bundle stood up, and your bundles gathered around and bowed low before mine. Now, if this sounds a little weird to you, it, it, it's because it is. Basically, Joseph had a dream where he and his brothers were working in a field together, and then suddenly the bundle of grain that Joseph was tying rose up and stood above the others. And the bundles of grain that his brothers were tying did what in response, if you remember? They bowed down to Joseph's bundle of grain. Ultimately, it was a symbol implying that one day Joseph's brothers would actually bow down to him. Now, here's the thing. If your or one of your siblings came up to you with this crazy dream, we'd probably just roll our eyes and move on, right? Just a dream is what we would think, what we would say. But in this culture in which Joseph is living, dreams were such a major deal. They were actually believed to be predictions of the future. And so when Joseph shared his dream about his brothers actually bowing down to him, they believed it was really going to happen. And as the passage tells us, hearing that made Joseph's brothers hate him more. Hate him more. So what's worse? In the next few verses, Joseph went on to share another dream. Right? If you guys know anything about the story, he goes on to share another dream he had. And, and this time, there was the stars, the moon. They all bowed down to worship him. So as you can probably guess, again, his brothers got even more irritated after hearing about his second dream. But what do dreams and this family drama and, and Joseph's family drama really have to do with us? And I think we can actually learn this from this story is when we can't see the bigger picture, we should remember the impact we have on our families. Let me say that again. When we can't see the bigger picture, we should remember the impact we have on our families. Now, scripture doesn't tell us what everyone in Joseph's family was thinking or feeling, but we can guess a lot based on their actions. And it seems like everyone, Joseph, his brothers, even his dad, didn't notice how their, their actions affected each other. You could say that they all were missing some pretty major self-awareness and definitely didn't see that bigger picture. All of that combined and caused a lot of conflict. So let's think about it, right? Jacob loved his son so much that he treated him differently than the rest of his brothers. So Jacob didn't see the picture, right? That he was causing a lot of tension and conflict between his sons. And Joseph's brothers, well, they weren't aware of the way that their strong and harsh responses to Joseph impacted him. Even though they were reacting to the hurt caused by their dad's favoritism of Joseph, that didn't mean, or excuse me, that didn't mean that how they treated Joseph didn't negatively affect him. They, did, they weren't thinking about it. And so even thinking about our main character, Joseph, Joseph struggled in the self-awareness department himself. He knew his brothers were jealous of the way that his father took care of him and treated him, right? But still Joseph came to them deliberately with not one, but, but two dreams saying, hey, one day you're going to bow down to me and, and I'm going to be better than you, basically, right? So he didn't see the picture of, bigger picture of how sharing those things might hurt his brothers and frustrate and make his brothers more angry. Now, everybody in this story is missing that bigger picture. They weren't paying attention to how they were negatively affecting their family members. And honestly, I think that's true for a lot of the family attention and stress that we experience. Typically, nobody's trying to be self-centered, right? We're simply trying to make sure that our needs are getting met. We're trying to make sure that things go the way we want them to go. We're not trying to hurt anybody else. We're honestly not thinking <laughs> about anyone else. But that's the problem, isn't it? 
Because when we only think about ourselves, we miss that bigger picture. We miss the way our actions affect and impact others, specifically our families. Now, maybe you feel like everyone else in your family isn't paying attention to how their impacts or their their actions impact you. And maybe your your mom lied about something or uh, maybe your dad left or maybe one of your siblings has hurt you in some way. To you, honestly, I would say this, that there's more to those stories too. The people who hurt you or your family, they usually do that because there's more to their story. Maybe they've been hurt and they're reacting out of their own pain. Now, does that make what they did okay? Absolutely not. That's not at all the case. And I really would encourage you to talk to someone you trust if you're being mistreated or, or harmed in some way or have been. But it can help us see the bigger picture when it comes to the way that we feel about them. So I want to make this point. When, when you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact that you have on your family. So many of us are hyper aware of the way that our family affects us, but we're rarely aware of how we affect them. See, that's what's happened with Joseph's story, and look how that turned out. Not great, right? Everybody was upset. Everybody was frustrated. frustrated. And as we'll see in weeks, uh, in, in later weeks, things get worse. And I mean really worse before they get better. So instead of letting this story of our own families, or letting this be the story of our own families, we can flip the way we see what's happening. We can work on becoming more aware of how our families and our words, our actions, behaviors impact our families. Because again, when you can't see the bigger picture, remember that you can impact and have an impact on your family. So what does this actually look like? How do we start seeing the bigger picture when it comes to actions with our families? And I'm gonna kind of just run through these for us. But the first one is be aware. I think that we have to work on developing an accurate view, accurate view of ourselves. We have to be aware of how our actions impact others. As ultimately, there's some questions to ask ourselves. How is the way I'm affecting my, or acting affecting my family? How can I put my family first? What do I need to give up or put aside to serve my family? How can I show love to my family? What can I do to put my family's needs before my own? Listen, paying attention to how our actions affect others is extremely hard. I'm not saying that this is an easy thing. And even now as I'm married and have a wife and have two kids, this, it doesn't get easier. And it's not always easy for us to see the way we're, we're impacting other people. But if you aren't sure, ask someone close to you for honest help. You can ask a small group leader, a parent, a sibling. Go to someone who knows you well, and they'll speak the truth in love. Ask them to help you see something in yourself that maybe you can't see on your own. And the second thing is, is take a step. Take one step to change that thing in yourself or to be more aware of what impacts others. Then choose a different response. Maybe you always speak harshly to your younger siblings. So you need to practice recognizing and correcting that tone. Maybe you leave your clothes or your dishes or your homework or school stuff laying around the house for your parents to clean up. So you need to maybe practice more self-awareness and just pick up after yourself. Or maybe you just need to control your temper. And instead of blowing up at your family when you're tired or frustrated or mad, take a breath. Do the 10 count, right? Count to 10 and take deep breaths. But whatever it is, pause and think about how you're affecting others. Look at how you're impacting the bigger picture and make a move to change it for the better. So 
let's put it this way, just to remember, when you can't see the bigger picture, remember the impact you have on your family. Remember that everything you say, everything you do is gonna have an impact, but it's also gonna have an impact, a special impact, lasting impact with your family. So one question I wanna pose to you this week is this, what's one way I might be causing conflict or tension in my family? What's one way I might be causing conflict or tension in my family? With that, let's go ahead and pray. Dear God, I thank you for this time in which we get to come together to, um, to learn more about you and to learn about how we can um, see the bigger picture and remember that the impact we have um, on our family, whether it be our actions, whether it be our words, whether it be um, even our thoughts, Lord, I pray that we would remember the impact we have on our family. And Lord, I pray that you would be with each person watching this this week, that you would encourage them, help them to make those steps, make the, the choice to be aware and ask those self-aware questions and, and take a step in that right direction to curb those um, attitudes and those reactions. Lord, I pray for uh, confidence and peace and encouragement and control um, in those actions um, this week and maybe just begin to take those steps. And I pray that um, we would seek you in those, that we would learn from you and learn over the next few weeks from Joseph and his life and um, learn how we can see the bigger picture of the things going on around us. And so, Lord, we again, we praise you. We lift all these things up in your name. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. I pray that you guys have a great week and um, we'll see you on Thursday. Have a good one, guys.